His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a written message from the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud of Saudi Arabia, concerning the distinguished historical brotherly relations linking the two countries and their people, as well as the latest political developments at regional and international arenas and issues of common concern. The message was conveyed to His Majesty the King in the presence of the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of State and Member of the Cabinet, Dr. Mas'ad Abyan at Safriya Palace this evening. His Majesty the King underlined the excellent relations existing between the two countries, including and the progress of cooperation and coordination in all fields. His Majesty also praised the leading role played by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques in support of relations between the two countries and promoting the progress of the GCC. His Majesty the King asked the Saudi envoy to convey his greetings to the custodian of the two holy mosques and to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and wishes of more progress and prosperity to the Saudi people under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today the credentials of the newly appointed ambassadors of Iraq, Libya, Qatar, Turkey and Singapore. The Iraqi ambassador Dr. Ahmed Al Dolemi arrived at Sakhir Palace where he was met by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. Dr. El Dolemi then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Iraq to Bahrain, and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. Later, the Libyan ambassador, Mr. Fauzi Abdul Al, arrived at Sakhir Palace and was met by the head of royal protocol ahead of an official ceremony. Mr. Abdul Al then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Libya to Bahrain. His Majesty the King and the newly appointed ambassador discussed friendly relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and Libya. The Qatari ambassador Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Saud Al Thani arrived at Sakhir Palace where he was met by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. Sheikh Jassim bin Mohammed bin Saud Al Thani then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Qatar to Bahrain and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador.
Later, the Turkish ambassador, Mrs. Hatun Demirer, arrived at Skhir Palace and was met by the head of royal protocol. An official ceremony was held for the ambassador. Mrs. Demirer then presented her credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Turkey to Bahrain. His Majesty the King and the newly appointed ambassador discussed friendly relations between Bahrain and Turkey. After that, the Singaporean ambassador, Mr. Lawrence Anderson, arrived at Skhir Palace where he was met by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. Mr. Anderson then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the new ambassador of Singapore to Bahrain and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador. During the audiences, which were attended by the Minister of the Royal Court, the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs and the Head of Royal Protocol, His Majesty the King praised the close relations linking Bahrain and their countries and the progress of these relations in many areas. For their part, the ambassadors conveyed the greetings of their leaders to His Majesty along with their wishes for his good health and happiness and for Bahrain for further progress and prosperity.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Skhir Palace today. The President of the National Audit Office, Hassan Al Jalahma, who presented His Majesty the King with the office's report for 2012 2013. His Majesty hailed the office's efforts, congratulating its staff on the office's acceptance as a member of the International Organization of Supreme Audit Institutions, which reflects the office's professionalism. Wishing the office further success, he praised its role in performing its responsibilities and preserving its independence, which helped to improve the performance of government ministries and institutions in order to achieve the best interests of the country and the people. Following the meeting with His Majesty the King, Mr. Al Jalahma said it had been a great honor to present His Majesty with the office's report as per Article No. 19 of the National Audit Office Law. He said this is the 10th report issued by the office and included a number of comments and recommendations which were the results of its monitoring activities throughout 2012 and 2013. He noted the positive progress made at the National Audit Office by applying international auditing standards and international standards. He added that the office's independence guaranteed by the Constitution and law had given the office's monitoring work greater trust and credibility. He also said that this trust has been reflected in the attention paid to the office's reports by the Cabinet and the Representative Council, as well as the Bahraini Society. The chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Charity Organization, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the annual meeting of the Bahraini British Friendship Society in London in the presence of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. The meeting was attended by the RCO Secretary General, Dr. Mustafa Sayed, Bahrain's ambassador to the UK, Al Sam'an, Lord Howell, the president of the Friendship Society, Brigadier Peter Sincock, officers of the Royal Military Academy of Sandhurst, members of the Labour and Conservative parties, GCC ambassadors and a number of distinguished officials. His Highness Sheikh Nasser conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. His Highness Sheikh Nasser delivered a speech in which he expressed appreciation for the role played by the society in its 37-year history in strengthening relations between the two countries which have expanded bilateral cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honor to be here among such distinguished guests addressing a society which truly exemplifies the nature of the friendship between our two nations. And I greatly appreciate the warm welcome and hospitality you have extended to me. I am delighted that Sheikh Khalid, our esteemed foreign minister, is able to join us tonight. and that I am sharing the podium with such an eminent and long-standing friend of Bahrain, Lord, Lord Howell. I should also like to thank Brigadier Sinkok and the other officials of the society for all they do to ensure that it continues to flourish and not least for all the hard work that has gone into the organization of this splendid event tonight. I am particularly pleased to address the Bahrain Society here in London because as you may know, my personal relation with Britain is a deep and strong one. From the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst, good days, Mr. Peter Person. <laughs> not, more than, not more than a couple of years after Sandhurst, when coming back, it still feels the same. So this is really great feeling. <laughs> and especially, a very special occasion happens here in England two times, I've got my birth of my three children just born in here in England. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not bad at math. It's two times because I've got twins. <laughs> I could not be any closer to this beautiful country and its people, honestly. Being with you this evening is my first engagement since returning from, the, from Florida last week, where I'd led my Bahraini team to the Iron Man the Florida Triathlon Competition. <laughs> it might sound easy. It's only 3.8 kilometers swim, 180 kilometers bike, and then at the end of the day, a full marathon run. So, <laughs> and the only problem is I wrote my speech before doing the Ironman. I don't know how I'm gonna stand up straight now. <laughs> Well, I could not be 
I could not be any happier for accomplishing my first Ironman, and I offer no prizes for guessing which is the more agreeable. <laughs> Dear friends, since the establishment of the Bahrain Society, its work has been invaluable and in sust sustaining our ties with the United Kingdom. Today, these ties go back some two centuries and embrace areas which would have been unthinkable, indeed unimaginable, all, these, all those years ago. Our two countries may have very different histories, but at our core, we share many fundamental values and beliefs. For example, we are both monarchies, and we both take pride in the diversity of our societies and recognize the central importance of protecting the rights of all, regard, regardless of gender, ethnicity, or belief. We both recognize, too, the need to empower our citizens, enabling them to play a full and active part in building a prosperous future. Indeed, this has been among the central principles of the reforms His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa initiated in 2008, embracing his vision of a kingdom based on the principle of sustainability, competitiveness, and fairness in order to ensure a secure and fulfilled life for every single Bahraini. And these common values have helped develop a real sense of shared community among Britons and Bahrainis. Your countrymen, both collectively and through the efforts of some remarkable individuals, have been integral to Bahrain's development over the years, contributing their expertise in fields such as education, trainings, training, finance, oil, and the legal system. Meanwhile, from the 1950s onwards, Britain was the destination for Bahrain school graduates, many of whom are now leading personalities in both the public and the private sectors in Bahrain, generating a deep well of affection for the United Kingdom that I believe will never run dry. Ladies and gentlemen, as part of our efforts to empower the citizens of Bahrain, I have been honored to be assigned the task of helping to lead the Bahraini youth to be a better future. To do so, we must strive to instill hope in our young people and to channel their energy and enthusiasm towards common goals and values. In short, to inspire them to dream of great achievements and then help them achieve those dreams. The task of handling such a young population in a country which, with limited resources present many opportunities but also many challenges, in particular in an era in which social media has a major influence. Fundamentally, these challenges require leadership and a clear, confident vision. They require sufficient confidence in young people to be open and transparent with, with them and to keep them fully engaged and informed on important issues. For without such confidence, without such vision, we risk raising a generation of misguided youth for whom, unfortunately, technology and social media may often alienate rather than engage. We need to show young people that productivity and personal development are the only routes to building a better future for their country and themselves. We have a saying in Bahraini where we say, which has many meanings. One of, one of which is that to have a future, you have to start on solid ground. It is indeed part of our Bedouin heritage to respect our elders and to build upon their achievements. Thus, youth of today must take responsibility for continuing their work whilst humbly acknowledging that those who have set us on our path while having limited resources still had the imagination and creativity to use those limited means to transform Bahrain into the vibrant, progressive, and dynamic country as it is today. Personally, I am convinced that overcoming hurdles in life is about changing one's own mindset. It is about realizing that survival and success in the modern world means going beyond simple repetition of previous methods. In order to thrive, we need not only determination and motivation, but also imagination and creativity our forefathers so amply showed. 
ladies and gentlemen, among my other responsibilities is heading the board of the trustees of the Royal Charity Organization, founded in 2001 by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to provide comprehensive care for all Bahraini orphans and widows to act as a guardian to those who have nowhere else to turn. In addition to supporting these vulnerable groups with living allowances, education, health, and social care, and even wedding expenses. The organization is also tasked with handling relief projects in disaster striking countries. Being a small country with limited resources, such relief tasks presents great challenges and emphasize the need of creativity and motivation. Creativity, because resources are limited and we have to focus on their best use through sustainable projects and developments. Motivation, because we face human tragedies in tough and dangerous environments which are emerging from years of war or major natural disasters. So we have to be smart and fulfill our mandate. We will never be the biggest donor, but we believe that pound for pound, we can be among the most effective in bringing tangible assistance to those in need. For example, after the devastating 2010 floods in Pakistan, rather than transporting water, we decided to purchase water purifying equipment. 10 water treatment plants were supplied to different villages, enabling a continuous supply of drinking water at a lower cost. In Somalia, in 2011, we worked to bring in this, uh, dispersed communities together by drilling water wells in their original villages. Our 10 large water wells helped reform communities and ensure a continuous supply of water for drinking and for agricultural needs. In the Za'atari camp for Syrian refugees in Jordan, His Majesty the King thought the best way to help refugees was to build schools for these children to resume their education and give them hope. Four schools we built with a capacity of 4,000 students, offering the next generation the skills needed to rebuild after the terrible tragedy they have, have suffered. And in Gaza, Bahrain's efforts were will recognize being the first country to enter Gaza to supply medical relief and rescue equipment during the last war in 2009. We followed that by building a large school, a hospital, and a factory for artificial limbs. These efforts were widely recognized and also received the praise of His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. And also to add, today we had a phone call from our government and we arrange with His Majesty, who is always ahead of us in the human, humanitarian activities, is to help Philippines with their tragedy just happened two days ago. So we are also going to be creative and also forward, and as soon as possible, we'll be there with them to help them. It is encouraging that the education system in Bahrain is currently undertaking a reform program that encourages students participating, taking responsibilities, and thinking imaginatively. Academic and mental development would not, of course, be complete without health and physical education through sports and physical fitness. Today, I devote much time and attention promoting physical activity and physical fitness and to encouraging our young people, both boys and girls, to participate in sports. As I mentioned earlier, I recently did my first Ironman triathlon competition in Florida. I and we are very proud of the result we achieved. It is only through this all-round development that we can produce the rounded, motivated individuals who can not only contribute to their own happiness and fulfillment, but also play an active and constructive part in building their country. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, these are some of the challenges and some of the areas in which I am fortunate enough to be involved. And in addressing such challenges, we in Bahrain greatly value and appreciate our ongoing relation with the United Kingdom, through which our two countries continue to work so happily together, share knowledge and exchange expertise and experience. I therefore want to thank you for your long lasting friendship to Bahrain and assure you that we continue to value greatly your enduring support and, and wise counsel. We have a saying from our Bedouin philosophy, put your tents separate, but your hearts together.
And finally, you can be sure that our hearts will remain together as His Majesty, the King of Bahrain, recently here in London, early this year, said, the choices we make become our life. And the choices we made is the lasting friendship with you. Thank you very much. The Society's President, Brigadier Peter Singcock, then gave a speech in which he expressed his sincere appreciation and greetings to His Majesty the King and the Kingdom's wise leadership for their great role in consolidating relations between Bahrain and the United Kingdom over the past decades. He also praised the Kingdom's widespread achievements, development, growth and prosperity, stressing the importance of the Bahraini-British Friendship Society and its leading role in boosting relations between the two countries. He also commended Bahrain's keenness to develop relations with various countries around the world. Brigadier Sinkok noted that Bahrain had recently witnessed attempts to destabilize its security, safety and stability and urged Iran not to interfere in the Bahraini internal affairs so that the reform project of His Majesty the King continues. He also underlined the need for collaborated cooperation to maintain the unity of the Bahraini community. Then Lord Howell gave a speech in which he praised the outstanding and constantly developing relations between Bahrain and the UK over the previous decades and hailed the reforms carried out by His Majesty the King and his keenness to meet the aspirations of the Bahraini people. He also stressed the importance of the Bahraini-British relations and ways of developing them. Finally, His Highness Sheikh Nasser presented Brigadier Sinkok and to Lord Howell commemorative gifts. In line with its policy of strengthening social partnership and ensuring the stability of security in the kingdom, the Minister of the Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah al-Khalifa, met today with a number of scholars and dignitaries in the presence of the members of the Supreme Council of Islamic Affairs and police directors. During the meeting, the minister delivered a speech in which he expressed pleasure at meeting with religious scholars and leading figures in Bahrain to discuss how places of worship can protect the unity of Muslims. He said preachers have a responsibility to protect their places of worship rather than expect exploit them to spread incitement and division. The minister added that the law penalizes the spreading of hatred and incitement regardless of where the speech takes place or of the person who delivers that speech. He affirmed that achieving stability after disturbance or unrest requires solid principles and clear intents. He said the role of places of worship is to reinforce Islamic principles, brotherhood and harmony and promote national unity. He affirmed respect for the Ashura anniversary, stressing that society has an obligation and responsibility to ensure that this religious occasion is respected and to avoid activities that could lead to to the arrest of those responsible for any lawless acts. The minister said that under the leadership of His Majesty the King, Bahrain has made tremendous achievements in reinforcing human rights and basic freedoms, which follow the application of Islamic values in words and deeds. He added that the freedom of religion, the sanctity of places of worship, freedom of worship, equality, justice and consultation are guaranteed by the National Action Charter and Constitution. He said that with the major achievements in human rights and freedom of expression made in Bahrain, the motives of some other countries and organizations that ignore all this progress should be questioned. The Interior Minister underlined that Bahrain has always been able to overcome all obstacles through national unity, adding that Bahraini society has all of the elements necessary to protect the kingdom's values and accomplishments. The audience, meanwhile, expressed thanks and appreciation for the efforts of the ministry and police personnel to preserve the kingdom's security and stability by applying the rule of law and imposing public order. They noted that the meeting comes in line with the minister's sincere national efforts to protect national unity and preserve national gains. The Speaker of the Representative Council, Khalifa al-Bahrani, chaired the Council's regular meeting today. The meeting approved the Legislative and Legal Committee's report on amending some provisions of the Judicial Authorities Law and reorganizing the Commission on Legislation and Legal Opinion. The Council also approved an urgent proposal allocating a danger allowance for anti-narcotics police and the Ministry of Interior and referring the proposal to the concerned committee. The meeting reviewed a number of letters received from the government, including the closing account of the Future Generations Reserve for the fiscal year 2012 following its audit by the Financial and Administrative Control Bureau. It also discussed a number of proposals, including taking legal procedures against fake companies and implementing an emergency plan for draining rainwater and coordinating between all municipalities on that matter. 
A jury from the Bahrain Center for Excellence made an inspection visit to the Electricity and Water Authority, continuing its field visits to ministries and government institutions. The jury was then briefed on the project entitled Protecting Natural Resources for Future Generations by Reducing Water Wastage. The Minister of State for Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, said the project reflects the EWA's keenness to establish development projects aimed at providing the best services for the citizens. Meanwhile, the Minister of State for Follow Up Affairs, Mohammed bin Ibrahim Al Tawa, said that project spread awareness of the need to preserve natural resources, which would help preserve a high standard of living for society. The EWA's CEO, Sheikh Nawaf bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, underscored the authority's keenness to implement various development projects aimed aimed at improving the services provided to the citizens and implementing advanced methods of protecting the environment and its resources. The Minister of Housing, Basim Al Hamar, paid an inspection visit today to the site of the Bahir Housing Project following the Supreme Council for the Environment's approval for construction to commence. The plan was submitted by the Ministry in cooperation with the supervising consultant and concerned government parties. Mr. Al Hamar said the Ministry aimed at to finalize preparations within four months. He said the site was divided into two parts and would comprise 1,350 housing units. The Minister of State for Communications, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, announced today that the second Social Media Awards will be held on December the 11th at the Ritz Carlton Hotel in collaboration with the Social Media Club. He said that in Bahrain there are over 260,000 Twitter users, 514,000 Facebook users, 120,000 Instagram users, and 160,000 LinkedIn users, reflecting an increase in users of over 14%, 20%, and 50%, respectively, since last year. He noted that government bodies and the private sector cannot overlook the significance of social media in the communications sector. He said the Social Media Award aims to encourage and promote responsible social media usage.